Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> and so the car took advantage of that. And once it started into the intersection, so that was like, that was really brilliant. That, that was very impressive. Hey y'all, it's Dr. Know-It-All coming to you on a lovely Saturday morning. I have full self-driving 12.3.2.1 or 12321. <laughs> That's the easy way to remember it at this point. So we are going to try a full self-driving test. I'm going to do several of uh, several things. Uh, first, I'm going to start with uh, going to the Dollar General so that I have to do that left-hand turn so that we'll go out of there. Uh, I'm, I'm at the beautiful horse farm that is near my house, and so we will start the drive. I have a ton of stuff to talk about. There's a lot of news that's happened, so here we go. Let's engage full self-driving, and uh, you know we'll see what happens. So uh, a, a few things that are going on right now that are just uh, astounding. Number one, the, the test for everybody is out now. So if you have a, a Tesla in North America, so that should be, I'm not positive if Canada is happening yet, but I think it is. But definitely in the United States, if you have um, a Tesla, you should have on your uh, screen when you start the car up, um, it should give you a, uh, like a, you've got your free trial. It says like full self-driving supervised enabled for one month. So you should have that now. If you go to purchase a new Tesla, then you are going to be forced to take a, a, a test drive, <laughs> forced. <laughs> so you'll, you'll do a full self-driving uh, demo drive. I don't know how they're going to deliver the numbers that they want to deliver this, this quarter because the quarter ends tomorrow on Sunday. Uh, first little challenge coming up here. So we will see what happens with these guys. Uh, the car should start, okay, so it sees them. Let's actually move this over like that. So it's seeing them, it's moving out of the way much more carefully than it did on 11. So that's actually really, really nice. That's good. Oh my goodness. So much better than version 11. Version 11, I always disengage because it's my neighborhood and I don't want to be like, an, you know, that guy. It's like, oh, that guy in the red Tesla. We're, we're gonna, he's gonna try to run us off the road or something like that. So anyway, so that's really lovely to see. So much smoother handling that. Um, the other really, really big news, and we can talk about this more as, as the drive goes on, is that uh, Elon Musk last night said that the car, I'm driving a hardware four car, and interestingly enough, our black car is a hardware three car. Uh, he said that all full self-driving and it's no longer beta, that's another big piece of news. Like I said, it's just crazy stuff that's been happening lately. That full self-driving is all driving on hardware three, like stack, essentially it's designed for hardware three. And hardware four is actually running in emulation mode. So if you don't know, if you, have ever owned like a like a I don't know a Mac or something like that and installed Windows on it. That means Windows running in emulation mode. Windows is running in emulation mode. There's plenty of other things. Interesting. I don't know what's going on there. That was a weird little slowdown. I don't know what it saw. There was nothing there. So that was very weird. But anyway, it's oh by the way, I'm on auto max speed, so it's setting the maximum speed right now. I'm not going to do that. I have found it in the previous version in 12.3 that the auto max speed was way too slow, but Elon and others have said that it is substantially fixed in this version. So we will see what happens and I'm going to give it, <laughs> I'm just doing a test drive here. I don't expect, given the fact that it's Easter weekend and the students are going to be away and it's a Saturday morning and everything, this is a mistake, by the way, it should actually go up to this, uh, this white line. So that actually, it was handling better previously, but now it's creeping. So it should just go. Now the first uh, big, big test will be what it decides to drive at on this road. Oh, interesting. So it still thinks that the speed limit is 25 and it's actually 50, we'll see that in just a second. But at least it's going 40 now before it would drive 25 unless I scrolled it up manually. So now, okay, so now it, let's see. I don't know, let's see what it decides that it should drive. So it knows it's 50, but it's still only driving 45 on this road, very interesting. So again, because it's a Saturday morning, don't have to worry about it, all that stuff. Uh, so, okay, so back to hardware three. So hardware three, it, the, the, that's the older version of the hardware. <clears throat> hardware 4 has a lot more processing power, a lot more memory. You know, it's an upgraded computer, basically. But the uh, but Hardware 4 is running the Hardware 3 stack in emulation right now, which means that actually Hardware 3 will be slightly better than Hardware 4, and that has huge consequences. Number one, if anybody thought that Hardware 4 was necessary to do full self-driving, it really isn't. By the way, really nice. It did not slow down for that truck. Because uh, it saw that it was slowing down and stopping it, uh, it didn't you know 11 would oftentimes go er, and just stop a little bit just because it was afraid But it didn't do that this time. So that's really cool um, Okay, so we're turning right. I guess though. No. Unfortunately, this truck is turning left. This is a very long Oh, <laughs> it's a very long light, but we actually hit it perfectly. So anyway, um, 
let's see how it handles this turn. I'm just, you know, for, for comfort, for ease. I actually invited misinformation on this drive with me, but she's busy this morning. She does not do first test drives because I do not disengage unless I absolutely have to, and she's not a big fan of that. So anyway, you can see behind me how beautiful it is. But but anyway, so the fact that it's running in emulation mode means, number one, that Hardware 3 actually is probably running a little bit smoother right now. Number two, it means that Hardware 3, the hardware that's in the older cars, because a lot of people are like, Hardware 3 is not going to be adequate to do full self-driving. Right now, this feels very, very confident. It's like, okay, this is full self-driving. This thing is working well. It's doing a good job. Uh, and, and Hardware 4 is running an emulation because, of course, there's enough headroom on Hardware 4. So this truck is going to, of course, pull out in front of us because that's what they do. Um, but anyway, but but what that means is when we do eventually get a native version of hard, hard, native Hardware 4 version of the stack, I have a feeling that the ability of the car is going to be mind blowing. Now, why wouldn't they have a hardware four version right now? The, well, number one, because they don't need it because obviously hardware three version is running adequately. Here comes a left-hand turn. I'm gonna pause this for just a second. I want you to watch this as we come up on here. Uh, so we're going to go around this bend. And as we do, you'll see that there's a Bradford pear and then there's a big pine tree and then there's a barn and then there's all this junk in the way. So you really can't see the, to the left back here and this bend is coming around. So it's a very blind turn. And again, I believe this is 4640 Atlanta Highway. Ooh, it's cutting that corner tight. Okay, let's see what it does here because this is a stop. I've already got the UPS store built in it. Uh, interesting, so what is it doing? <laughs> I'm just gonna let it go. I'm gonna see what happens. So I don't know where it's gonna decide because it should have come in that way and gone out the parking lot the other way, but uh, you know. Okay, so, <laughs> so this thing has always had significant problems with the navigation around here. So, okay, it says it wants to do a U-turn, so I don't know, let's, let's let it go until it decides it wants to stop. Okay, it got us to the parking lot, kinda, sorta. I really loved taking French in high school and even used it recently in Vancouver, Canada, but I've always wanted to learn Spanish too, as I spend far more time in Spanish-speaking countries than I do in French-speaking ones. Well, for the past few months, I've been taking care of that by using today's sponsor, Babbel, to teach me Latin American Spanish. Babbel is scientifically proven to help you start speaking a new language in three weeks, which is great for me as I like results quickly. Plus, Babbel teaches you real-world conversational skills, something practical you can use with people in your life who speak the language or make you feel comfortable doing daily tasks in a country you're traveling in. And that comfort can make all the difference as you can have practical conversations about travel, business, relationships, food, and more. Me llamo Sabina. Me llamo Sabina. Ellas se llaman Ana y Eva. Ellas se llaman Ana y Eva. ¿Cómo te llamas? ¿Cómo te llamas? Be sure to check out my link in the description to get 60% off your subscription during their spring sale. But hurry, time is limited. Babbel is a fantastic way to learn a new language with lessons designed by real language teachers. Plus, with Babbel, you get two free live classes with your subscription and a 20-day money-back guarantee. So you can try Babbel risk-free and find out how easy it is to learn a new language. Thanks again to Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link in the description to get 60% off your subscription during their spring sale. And now let's get back to it. All right, I'm going to put it in park. Oh, that was interesting. It actually brought up the parking thing. So it actually asked me what was disengaged. So now I want to continue the trip. And I'm going to go ahead and give it a turnaround here because I don't think it's going to be able to handle that. But I don't know. <laughs> Might have been able to. So anyway, it navigated us there without any problems at all. But it still definitely has issues in terms of navigating all of this stuff. So destination, yeah, it's closed. It doesn't matter because I'm going to pick up some mail out of here so let's go ahead and engage it and see what it does and uh, it's not doing anything so let me just tap the accelerator okay so i just gave it a little tap to tell it to go ahead and go it's being very mm, interestingly um <laughs> wussy in the parking lot so far i intentionally gave it a pretty rough start right here I, like normally i would not do this on my first drive but i was like you know what this stuff is working great so let's find out uh okay interesting it really should not be going this way because this is you can see that the parking spaces are opposite so it should have figured that out but i'm hoping it will <laughs> correct for itself here oh okay okay buddy all right yep like i said i'm giving it some interesting uh some interesting possibilities here so again nobody's around i have the good fortune of that okay so now you can see the barn all this crap in the way and there's trees and there's a bend in the road so now huh, we're gonna start with <laughs> 
It's just scary. So actually, nobody is coming from the left right now. The car definitely needs to creep up a little bit to be able to see better. So actually, after this U-Haul, I believe it'll have a free reign to go. Oh, no, 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 it doesn't. Yep, just as soon as that U-Haul went by, people came from the left. So it did see them, so that's actually good. And uh, now it could go because, okay, Okay, it's creeping out. Now it needs to stop again because somebody's coming around that corner and I can see them. So, yep, we almost had free reign here, but it decided it was going, oh, now we got somebody. Nope, I thought they were going to go into the suicide lane, but they didn't. So, okay. So yeah, this is a, this is definitely a much more aggressive first drive test because, and if you haven't seen it, I'll put a link up in the corner so you can see the last time I did this with 12.3. And uh, it did. It actually did not need any disengagements, but I was uh, I was getting gray hairs from being completely stressed about it because it was very wussy about getting out into the road. So yeah, so we actually got quite a bit of traffic here. It's, I I expected this to be a complete easy. Okay, here it goes. All right, so. All right, yes, okay. So that was good, but wow, that took way too long. So feedback for a Tesla's team, you're gonna have to teach the car to go out when there's clearly cars in the right hand. So this is five lanes, as you can see. And there were cars coming in the right hand lane, the fifth lane over. There was plenty of room for the car to go. Where are we turning? What is it doing? Oh, wow. I think it's going to take me a back road. Well, I thought we'd go on the highway, but this is actually even better. We'll take a little, oof. Oh, it's really close to the curbs. It makes me a little bit nervous how close it is to these curbs, but okay. So we're taking, this is actually, this is cool because we won't go on the highway. I think the highway is still hardware four stack. So not that, I mean, sorry, is 11, is the full self-driving 11 stack. I got hardware four in my brain. All right, so I fast forwarded through. I was blabbing while I was waiting, but it took so long for me to get through that last light that I'm going to repeat things because I assume I'm going to squeeze that up because you guys don't need to see all this stuff. This is interesting. I haven't ever driven this road before back this way. Uh, well, that's not true. I've done it once or twice, but not, not recently at all. I think I've done it coming this way, but not coming this way. So, so anyway, um, uh, I think it was Chuck Cook or maybe somebody else. But that was nice. Did you see the way it just went right out into that double yellow line to get around that car because it was sticking out pretty far? That was really good. Technically illegal, but that's the way you have to drive if you're going to get around parked cars safely without getting so close to them that you could easily, you know, if somebody opened up a door or something like that, that you would hit them. So that is correct driving. That's really good. This, this feels really good. Aside from the fact that it was too wussy about getting out into traffic for that turn, it's actually been quite outstanding. So really good stuff all right now we'll turn out next to this tesla here cool and even though it feels close to the curb when i'm looking at the the side view as it you know the turn signal view it's actually pretty good it seems to be doing okay so uh anyway so so what people have suggested and what will probably happen is kind of what that's called the ups routing so ups intentionally routes no left turns if possible on their trucks because it's just faster to go right turn and turn around somewhere or something like that than it is to wait and wait and wait on a left turn. So just like that one, it would have been more reasonable if I had say I was in a robo taxi and said, I want to go back to my house where it would have been a left-hand turn. What it would have done instead is make a right and then go someplace and turn around and go back. It, it, you can route around these very, very bad, nasty left-hand turns that exist in places. So that's something that certainly I would think before like an autonomous vehicle, fully autonomous vehicle where you're sitting in the back, that you would do things like you'd intentionally route it around it. Okay, so back to the hardware three, hardware four discussion, because I was talking about that while I was waiting for that light, uh, for that stop sign uh, for the car to go, and it wasn't going obviously. So we'll, the hardware three, hardware four. So currently there's one stack that is being trained and that's hardware three. So the difference between that is that the car is, so we're gonna get on the highway, kind of a highway, it's 316, it's a weird highway, but we'll get on that for just a minute and then get off. But, but so hardware three is the older one, right? It's got less memory, less compute power, all of that kind of stuff. Hardware four, more memory, more compute power, but what you can do is you can run hardware three in emulation, so you can actually fake being hardware three, and I think that includes the cameras, because the cameras are higher resolution as well, but they're probably reducing 
reducing the resolution and the scope of the cameras to match Hardware 3. So they're, they're faking the input from Hardware 3. They're um, working on creating, uh, they're, they're making Hardware 3, essentially they're just turning Hardware 4 into Hardware 3, <laughs> all the way through the process, that would be my guess. So the rationale for that is that you have to split your time, your human and compute time. And remember that up until very recently, Tesla has been compute constrained. I did a video about the consequences of Elon saying that they're no longer compute constrained, which means that they might be able to start training hardware for native stacks now. But because you're compute constrained, you just want to do one. The other thing is you don't want to optimize too soon. There's always this problem of if you optimize too soon, you will create a situation where you optimize on the wrong thing. So they're playing with the architecture currently. They're trying to figure out what the best architecture is. Probably it looks like they've got the best architecture at this point, but all of these things combined, you have the limit, limited human power, um, limited compute power, the, the fact that you don't want to optimize too quickly on a hardware system that you don't, that's, that's not going to work adequately. And all of that stuff means that it just makes sense to only do hardware three at this point. So the cool part is that hardware three is clearly capable of driving the car on its own. So this is old stuff now. This is five, six years old, somewhere in that area. Not an unprotected left, by the way, in here. I got a green arrow. So anyway, that's the very easy, but it did take that very confidently and it should probably get over into the right lane fairly rapidly, I assume. Nice, okay, so we're still on auto max. This is, like I said, this is a weird, this is not an interstate highway. So I think it's going to treat this as if it's a back road. So it's going slightly over the speed limit, which is, which is adequate, that's correct for the area. And we should get off, I guess it's two miles that we'll get off. So this is actually a very good test. I like that it, it took this route. So anyway, uh, it's all really, really good news because it means that hardware three, like six year old hardware is going to be able to operate an autonomous vehicle adequately. This, this is very adequate. And especially because everyone who drives both, so let's see, okay. <laughs> Disengaging just a little bit, just for that police car that had nothing to do with my vehicle. It just was like, <laughs> always makes me nervous. So there was a police car there, so I wanted to slow down to be safe. Send a little feedback. I think at this point, that's the kind of disengagement. I, I will not count that as a disengagement for the vehicle. Although, honestly, it probably should have figured it out itself. So I guess you could solve. It's not a safety critical disengagement. It was a, um, I should probably should be a little bit slower around a human being, around a cop sort of a disengagement. So count that as you will. I won't count that as a disengagement. That was my own personal fear. And by, honestly, by that point, I was so close that it didn't really matter whether I slowed down or not. <laughs> So it was doing 64 at the time, which is what I would have been doing if I was driving on the road. So it was going the same speed as me, so I can't fault it for that. But, you know, it's one of those things that it should probably get built into the training set that when it sees a police car, it slows down, <laughs> make sure it's much more specific to the exact speed limit under those conditions. That in Georgia is the only time that you should actually go the speed limit. Every other time you should be exceeding the speed limit because nobody in this state drives the speed limit. So it's crazy. And I know people in other countries are like, you guys are nuts. That's, it says that's 55, you should go 55. That is absolutely not the case around here. You should absolutely go faster than that. Um, it, you're, you're like a hazard on the road if you don't go faster than the speed limit. But anyway, uh, so hardware, hardware 4 is just, it's remarkable that we're able to get to this quality of driving on six-year-old hardware. And it also means that when we do get a native hardware 4 train stack, it is going to be mind-blowing. It is gonna be like crazy. And who knows whether they're training one or not yet. So if they're no longer compute constrained, now they could actually start to take in, I'm sure they've been curating data at high resolution so that they can train on it. So if they're able to train on it relatively quickly, it'll probably be quite a while before we see it because remember, it's got to go through the training, then it's got to fail the first few times, right? Because it's going to be different, then it's got to get retrained, all of that stuff. Once it finally gets through all of that, it's got to go to the, um, the, the, quali the, well, the, the quality assurance testers, then the employee fleet, then all of this stuff. So I, I couldn't really take a guess. It certainly would not be before a couple of months from now if they aren't already deep into the training process. But 
certainly by summertime, I, I think that's a reasonable possibility. By like the July time frame, we could be looking at a hardware for native version. And when that does happen, we should see something pretty darn remarkable. That, that would be, I mean, I don't know this for a fact, but if hardware three is running that well and we're running on my hardware four right now in emulation mode and it's still doing this well, once it gets access to the bigger cameras, the higher resolution, by the way, the car should have gone around this van. It's uh, being a little wussy here. I've got it in assertive mode, but I don't believe that that has any effect whatsoever on the way that the car drives. So I think that it's just, it just is what it is, but not now. It shouldn't have gotten around now, but back before we got stopped at that light, it should have gone around that Astro van because he was driving extremely slowly. So the parking lot I'm going into is right up here where the Kroger and Waffle House are. And I'm going to, I don't know what'll happen. I'm going to see if it um, will park itself. I don't know. I, it, the, uh, the, the UPS store yeah, so like I think it's gonna probably drop me. It'll probably just like pull up as if it was a robo taxi. But I wish that there was some way of alerting the car that I actually wanted to park in a parking space, because it's sort of treating it like a, like as if it was a robo taxi. So let's see what it does with this vehicle here, because that guy, yeah, okay, that was actually pretty decent. So it kind of like hesitated until that car went around, or until it was obvious that car was not going to go. Okay, so let's see what happens here. So the UPS store is right up there, so it, it definitely knows where it is. But maybe it's going to want to park? I don't know. Or maybe it's just going to pull into this yellow, sort of like blocked off fire lane area and decide that that's as far as it's going. So, okay. Yeah, so it's ending. So definitely not a disengagement, and it's definitely working, but it should... Like it should do better than that because I'm in a parking lot and it's not like a robo taxi yet. So I would say I'm gonna push this over here. The reason why is because when I start, I still don't think it'll go in reverse. So I want to give it the best shot possible to leave and navigate to where it is. So we're gonna end the trip. I'm going to be right back. We will continue the conversation. Bye bye. All right, back again. Uh, <laughs> the mail that I was looking for, my. Uh, my partner, Ben, is not going to be pleased because we were looking for an Oregon employee identification number and it didn't arrive in the mail yet. So I am going to put it in full self-driving and ooh, cool. Okay, so we're gonna start driving. I don't know exactly how it's gonna route us at the beginning of this, but we will see. It's up, it's up to the car at this point. It's gotta navigate this parking lot and figure out the best way to get out of here. So now I'm going to work and then I'm going to go to the climbing gym because I know those routes fairly well. So interestingly, I don't know. It's being very hesitant about this car. It should, probably shouldn't have been. So, okay, it is making a left. So, interesting. Okay, I was curious how it was going to get out of this parking lot, but it's taking the most direct route, so it's going to go around where this police officer is coming, and hopefully we'll not do anything stupid. <laughs> See how the car behaves around a cop. <laughs> so there we go. Yep, perfect. All right, so uh, a little bit slow through here. I don't think it needs to be going eight. It thinks the speed limit is five. That's, that's excessively slow, probably more like 10 or 15 for a parking lot. But anyway, I mean, it's working, it's fine. So let's see if it treats this stop. That was interesting. So that's a painted stop sign. And my understanding is that those stop signs, this is a yield by the way, so it should just go right through. Yeah, a little bit, a little slow. <laughs> okay, it, it, you know, it could be more aggressive about getting out there, but where are we going? Are we gonna get on the highway? That's interesting. I would have thought it would have gone straight, but it looks like, um, that's weird. So I don't know if it's gonna route us, <laughs> like the route was clearly straight, but now it's decided it's gonna go a different way to work. Okay, I don't know. <laughs> Take the wheel, Elon. I don't know, I don't know what exactly what the uh, navigation information is, but that's, that's the way it's going, so I don't care. I'm letting the car drive this morning. Uh, yeah, because if I just go straight down this road, it would actually take me to work, but whatever it'll go this way too so um so yeah so I, I was going to say i am thinking about i talked to david uh, carbutt who's like sort of you know the guy who's helping me with the channel now and also doing strategic stuff and we decided it would be cool for me to do a kind of a like a, a background series on a, running a small business and starting what is going on here oh lord okay <laughs> okay that was weird i guess it decided it was going to do a u-turn the vehicle attempted to do a U-turn across traffic and failed. So that is interesting. So that's what it was actually trying to do was make a U-turn. So uh, yeah, I'll call that a fail, but again, that's a navigation fail. Uh, it is not a, that is not, a, also this was a fail too. It, 
I'm going to disengage just to tell them. The vehicle got behind another car when it clearly should have stayed in the lane that was empty instead. So, all right, so I'll put that in there because that's just ridiculous. Always take the empty lane if you can do it. This car can out accelerate anything, certainly a Hyundai Tucson. So, um, <clears throat> just <laughs> I'm an assertive driver what can I say so I would call that a couple of fails right there the, the this one was not safety critical and I normally shouldn't have disengaged it but I like to give Tesla feedback about that because I think that the car still needs to drive better in terms of human but that u-turn I was not going to let that car sit in traffic and kind of try to like figure out whether it was going to do that u-turn probably would have been able to do it but I could feel it slowing down and becoming less confident so that I, again, I think that was just a navigation error. It shouldn't have done that. It should have just gone ahead and gone straight, and it would have been fine. It, it didn't need to go this way at all. So that was that was <laughs> that was weird. Okay, so we're gonna have to count that against it because it definitely that that was to the point where I think it would have done it, but with all of that traffic there, I just was not willing to let it continue on without taking it out it just it felt like it could become a safety critical thing if the car got too close to the curb and I had to back up that was the problem it's like it all would have been fine except for the backing up so let's see what it does here so it should actually I mean I guess I guess that's okay I would have moved over it did see that truck and it colored it blue so it understood that it had to deal with that so now I believe yeah we are no longer on the version 12 stack so we're on the highway so I'm going to fast forward through here 4.8 miles and I will see you on the other side unless something interesting happens but this is this is the old stack the highway is really really good so it's kind of pointless to sit here and waste your time with that so I'll see you on the flip side I all right so cool all right that was good so I'm back. Uh, that was a really nice squeeze in there. Well, slightly aggressive, but actually very good. Again, very appropriate for the driving conditions. And it handled this motorcycle here quite well. It did a good job with that. And now we're getting off the highway. So, yeah, awesome. So uh, this should not be super challenging uh, right now because there's not a lot of pedestrians around, but you never know. <laughs> the whole morning has been a lot more challenging than I thought it was going to be. That was, that was the odd takeaway from this whole thing. So, okay, I, I think that, yes, I believe this is the correct lane choice when it's, um, when there's no traffic because we're gonna have to make a right-hand turn eventually. So might as well set yourself up in the right lane. So I will call that a good thing. And hopefully, because nobody was here, yes, I think the light is turning good. This is a very long light. So we got lucky, the light turned because nobody was here. So it just was waiting for us. So there we go. Good turn, a little soft. I mean, I'm really starting to get nitpicky now. This is like, you know, it's like, okay, it could have been slightly smoother through that turn, but really, it's kind of hard to argue with it. I'm going to disengage here to force the car to make a little more interesting of a turn. So that was me just because the navigation's gonna lead it that way. And I want it to do a different route because it's a little more complex. So, okay, let's make sure that it reroutes itself. And, yep, okay. So this, this actually makes it kind of wind through some smaller roads. And also this 25 mile an hour speed limit. So, so again, auto speed is set to max, or sorry, the max speed is set to auto, <laughs> opposite of that. And uh, we'll see how it goes. Um, some other news from the night, Elon said that uh, he still thinks that Tesla could become worth more than Apple and Saudi Aramco. Uh, that was an unnecessary slowdown there because there's nobody here. So there are pedestrians, but they're way off over on the sides of the road. So that's interesting. Okay, that that's interesting too because that is a slight mistake that it used to make, but it used to get all the way into that lane. That time it sort of corrected itself. There's nobody around. It's driving, it's driving too slowly here. It should go 25. It should not go faster than 25 here, maybe 30. But it should, certainly should not be going as slow as it is considering that there's nobody here. <laughs> I, know, I mean, I understand it, under, it knows that this is a congested area and normally there would be people. Oh, there's actually cyclists up here. So let's see which direction they go. We may have to deal with them, although it looks like they're kind of going the opposite direction from us. So, And you can see it's kicked up. So again, a little bit of a wiggly. That was a slight wiggle. And it sees the cyclist, but also knows they're on the other side. So that's all good. I'm about to go biking when I get home. I'm going to, uh, I'm going to, put this video together 
uh, upload it and go biking. So I'm very excited about that. It's a beautiful day for biking right now. So yeah, you can see this road windy and it will force me to come out and make a very, it's a really weird like sharp left and then sharp right with, uh, yeah, with it's, a, it's an unprotected right hand turn, but you can't see anything because there's a, a curve and a hill that comes up. So you can't see the cars until just before they, they're gonna hit you. So you have to, when you go, you have to go. And the car has always been inadequately slow about getting out into traffic. Um, it, it needs to be very aggressive here. This is also, you know, it's a pretty windy back here. It's called River Road for an obvious reason that there's a river down there. So, yeah, <laughs> it's a very pretty right now. And it also looks like summertime now all of a sudden. It's all the leaves have come out on the trees. It's beautiful. But anyway, I don't know what your thoughts about the Saudi Aramco thing. That's really interesting. I don't know if uh, it's, it's going to take longer at this point. Certainly also going to take longer for Tesla get to get to 20 million vehicles because this year is obviously a kind of a down year in terms of sales. Man, everybody's freaking out about that. I'm actually, like again, I don't care. Oof, ooh, that's really close. <laughs> oh yes, you see that? That was way too close, Tesla. You should never have allowed the wheel to get, I almost had wheel rash. Okay, so now it needs to get out. Yeah, yeah. again, it should be it's 35 here, not 25. Okay, so it does have a, a basic understanding of that, so that's good. So it, even though it's, it thinks it's 25 here still, it's going the correct speed because it's 35 here. So uh, again, oh, man, those speed limits are quite the quite the bugaboo for, for Tesla, the fact that it doesn't get them until it passes. Because here, we're going to see the 35, and so it knows that. But again, it just needs that local knowledge of how that stuff works. All right, so we just got, okay, so we should have an easy left-hand turn. Now, the navigation, I don't believe, understands exactly how to get into this parking lot, so I'll have to disengage because it just doesn't, it doesn't have quite the adequate understanding. So I think, let's see what it does. Uh, all right, I'm just going to push it in here. So, okay, the reason why I'm going to do that, this is actually the parking lot. I wanted to actually have to deal with this. Um, normally, of course, during the weekdays, that thing's down, but I wanted to have to deal with... Um, with that gate and figure that out. Because a lot of people have said it does not see gates. I, I noticed yet again, driving in, in uh, the Washington DC area, they have an easy pass lane that's in the middle. There's um, there's two lanes like this. Oh, I wonder, all right, let's see what happens if I push this. I actually, okay, auto park ready. All right, all right, bro, let's see you go. <laughs> what is it gonna do? I, it looks like it's gonna kind of go forward and back into the space. I don't know. This is cool. This is the first time I've ever seen auto park available. So I'm actually kind of, I literally have no idea what it's planning on doing. Ooh, please don't hit that car. Ooh, that was close. Okay. What is it doing? Oh, it's going into that spot. Wow. Okay. That's not a real parking place. <laughs> you can clearly see. So it's doing a great job. It's just not an actual parking place. <laughs> All right. Well, okay, so it did great at getting me a ticket. Uh, are you gonna stop? Okay, let me disengage. Let's see, oh, it didn't do that. Okay, auto park complete. So yeah, it auto parked, but it parked in an illegal place. So really great job, Tesla, but that was like a fail because of the fact that it just didn't work right, so okay. Navigate to active climbing. Let's put that in. One more place to go. It's a nice long drive we're making this morning. Okay, so we're going to put this guy in drive, and let's see if the full self-driving will enable itself here. Yep, okay. So we're going to come out of this non-parking parking place, and we're going to go over there. So anyway, let me know what you think about whether you think that Tesla will be able to, I'm curious how it's going to do this here, to beat Saudi Aramco and Apple was it Apple and Saudi Aramco? This is weird. Okay. It, I don't think it understands how to get out of this parking place, the parking lot. I have to give it a, a little bit. Again, this, is, this all comes down to navigation. There are so many problems with navigation, but this one is the fact that the parking lot used to have the exit used to be over there. So I think it's judging it based on that. Okay. So anyway, I'm just going to give it that because it should be able to figure out how to get out of here now. Um, but I don't know. Unfortunately, because that Denali is there, I think it's, let's see, are you going to slow down? Are you going to slow down? Okay. Again, I don't know whether it's slowing down specifically. Okay. We should really be going, Ooh, don't want it. Like, <laughs> I don't want the gate to close on my back end. So, um, I, I don't know if it's reacting to that or if it's just kind of going slow and it's just lucky because the gate opened very, very rapidly. Okay. So now 
Ooh, all right. <laughs> That was interestingly different. I, that was more aggressive than I would have done. I normally will stop there and just kind of look both ways, but it was like, got it, no problem at all. So it's treating these sort of like non-stop sign, stop sign areas where things are, are not actually stop signs, but kind of implied in a much more human manner than it did before. So that's really interesting. So as we wait for this left-hand turn, what do you guys think about the uh, about Tesla's eventual valuation? Again, I know that people are going to freak out because they're not selling as many cars this quarter as they have before. And their growth rate is going to be slow and that's going to reduce their multiple. And I'm considering it a sale because I'm looking at this car driving me around town and I'm throwing, you know, pretty reasonably difficult challenges at it. It's still not perfect, but I think it's really now coming down to navigation issues. It needs to be smarter about navigation. It was back there at that turn when I was looking at that rear view thing. I mean, that was probably like an inch away from hitting the curb. So that was, that would, I would have been very upset if it had hit the curb and rashed the wheels because knock on wood, I've managed to avoid that in this car so far and I would have been pissed. So, so that's something that needs to be a, taken account of. But generally speaking, except for, so this is interesting because I believe that I, well, I mean, I know I would go around this bus at this point. I'd go into the left-hand lane and I'd go around it, but um, I'm letting it have its head. So yeah, I, and that's something where it would have been reasonable to have gone around. Okay, it also looked at that guy. That was interesting. So it made, I didn't know whether he was gonna go left or to keep walking straight myself because he kind of looked to the left as he was walking out there. So that was really interesting how that happened. But uh, it handled that pretty well. It braked just a teensy bit harder than I would have. And again, I'm starting to get down into like really into the weeds of nitpicking. But it, it seems to me like we're talking about, yeah, I'm gonna miss this light because of the bus. I hate that. This is a very long light. <laughs> you can tell I drive right here. Okay, so now it should pick the left lane. Do not pick the right lane, pick the left. Okay. <laughs> That was not a disengagement and it ended up picking the right lane, but that was terrible. It was like doing this. It was like, it was like it was drunk trying to figure out which way it was going to go. So very interesting. It, uh, it clearly was of two minds and I, I don't even know why it would have thought that it would want to go in the right lane. Certainly you don't want to be behind a bus if you can avoid it, but also, uh, we're also going to turn left up here eventually. So at least assuming I think that's right. Yeah, we're going to turn left up here. I like that the fact that we've got these different navigation options that are available during the whole drive now. That's very cool. So uh, anyway, we're never going to get done with this conversation about, about Apple, Saudi Aramco, and, and Tesla's valuation. But, but again, I think that people focusing too much on short-term deliveries, especially when Tesla has guided for the fact that, you know, they don't have really new models out. They've got the Cybertruck, and it's selling great. And they're selling every one they make but they just aren't making that many yet. It hasn't ramped. So, um, so you know, it's just, there's only so many like exciting new vehicles that you're going to produce next year. Hopefully by the end of 2025, we'll have the Model 2 coming out. And at that point or whatever it's called, we'll have that coming out and we will have something really interesting. But in the meantime, it's just going to be a little bit slow. Now, again, I understand that the multiple goes down, but they also have to consider uh, they, meaning analysts and, and people who are considering buying Tesla stock or selling Tesla stock, have to consider that the long-term, you know, effect, the, lo the long-term prospects for the company are really in Optimus and Autonomy. The, the vehicle manufacturing business is very difficult and very, like, competitive and the, the margins, you know, Tesla was very lucky for a long time. Okay, it's gonna drive over something which it shouldn't have done. So <laughs> I think it was just a piece of rubber in the road, but I would have tried to avoid that if I could have normally. Didn't want to disengage for it, but I certainly also don't want to get a flat tire from like running over a nail or something. So that's just the kind of stuff that like that, just fine tuning again, that they, if, if possible, try to avoid a piece of junk in the road. And it certainly should be able to see that. Although again, you never know with the way that the way that uh, uh, neural networks work. It just literally, because it has to reject a lot of noise. It can't, it can't see everything because there's a ton of noise. And otherwise every mark in the road, every shadow on the road is going to be a problem. Where are we going? I guess we might be going a different way than I thought we were going. <laughs> this is, so that was interesting because now it went into the lane that I would have chosen, but okay, yeah, weird. I think what it was doing was attempting to go into the more empty lane, which was the correct choice, but Number one, I would have turned left back there, but number two, I think it's turning left up here, and so it kind of needed to be set up in this lane. So 
that was, you know, that I, again, I'm, I'm getting nitpicky here, but um, let's see how it handles this left. Okay, so that car was coming, but they were far away, so that was clearly a, a good way to go. And I think that I think it did great, actually. So that was perfect. It's accelerating much more quickly now. This is interesting. Where are we going? Uh, okay. <laughs> that was weird. Okay. Oh, this is the same mistake as last time. It did this last time. It just drove right through the parking um, spots. So this is not a lane, guys. Tesla, you got to fix this. That that I didn't disengage, but that was clearly oof, again. Okay, we we have a lot more room on that one. It felt close, but <laughs> I'm now I'm freaked out about wheel rash because of that, that last thing and people telling me that there was wheel rash. Uh, anyway, you gotta gotta fix that. If there's cars parked there, I'm sure it wouldn't do it, but because there were no cars parked there, it just it's treating it like a lane and it's not a lane. It's a parking area. You need to stay far to the left. There was nobody around me, behind me, or anything like that, so it wasn't unsafe. But if there were, I would have had to disengage because people would have been like, "What is this guy doing?" So, okay, here's another really good test right here. You can see that this, uh, this bridge is at eye level. It's actually below eye level right now, and the car does a great job of dealing with that. So that's really good that it's able to handle that. It's also driving pretty reasonable in terms of speed when the max speed is just set to auto. I, I think it's actually doing a, a good job. It feels very adequate. All right, and if we get lucky here, I will get somebody on this four-way stop because it's, it's always had a little bit of trouble with this four-way stop. Okay, good. It, for whatever reason, it tends to be a little wussy about trying to get out into it. So let's see, Honda girl. Okay. Oh, wow. Okay. <laughs> I honestly don't know. I believe that she actually had the right of way if you're going to think about it, but she did hesitate. So, you know, that, if, if you hesitate, it, so the car took advantage of that. And once it started into the intersection, because we sort of both started at the same time and the car was very aggressive about saying like, no, I got this. And that was really good. I mean, once you're going and once you're in the intersection, don't stop because it actually makes it worse. So that was like, that was really brilliant that that was very impressive it's something that 11 would never have done that that was super good wow also doing a great job with these um with these speed bumps really really cool nice 13 12 i mean maybe a little bit faster again i'm starting to get i'm splitting hairs at this point <laughs> it's just crazy i think what i'm going to do is there's a there's a, a coffee shop called buvet that is right next door to the climbing gym. And the climbing gym obviously isn't open and I'm gonna go biking today anyway, but I might go grab myself a coffee before um, before I head on. I'm also interested to see what this does about the parking lot here. It's never gone into the parking lot at active climbing. Uh, again, we'll see. I, I don't, these are, again, it's, it's really coming down to navigation, but the really cool part is that I've always claimed that that 20 to 30 second sort of midterm planning Okay, nobody's coming, so again, uh, come on guys. Come on, Nitsa. You gotta allow the car to not have to stop so, so long at these stop signs. But that was interesting. There was no turn signal there. It probably should have had one. So anyway, I'll probably stop there and grab some coffee like um, over there before I do that. Assuming they're open, I think they're open. Gosh, it's a coffee shop, they should be open. So now let's see, uh, okay, interesting. This is not actually the parking place. Not the parking location, but whatever. Actually, you can park here if you want. So now I want to see if it wants to do the, the parking thing again. Um, so let's see. I'm just going to let it go till it ends. So active climbing is actually over there. <laughs> okay. So are we done? Are we done? It's just creeping forward. Okay. I want, I want you to park for me. Oh, it's not, it's not showing the parking thing. Let me see if I, okay. Oh, there we go. Okay. Park. All right, start. Yeah. So I guess you have to take it out of full self-driving, which is kind of weird because you think you actually want it in full self-driving. But I mean, let's, let's ta-da, let's have a big finish for this thing. So let's see if it'll actually park in a real parking place this time. <laughs> we actually have a real parking place. That is a, a big bonus over uh, getting, I think it would be an $80 ticket if I'd parked in that spot at UGA. So, all right. So now it's obviously able to go in reverse now, which is a really, really good thing. So it should be able to make some, um, through, oh, also interestingly enough, it's keeping that thing on. So now, yeah, it was a little bit off. And so it's adjusting itself. And now look at that. Mwah, that is beautiful. Wow. Woohoo! <laughs> All right. I'm very excited about that. This is really cool. So it picked the wrong, so it's almost right. It's, it's actually, this is an adequate parking place. It's the, the real official one is the next door one, but this is fine. But that 
like it got me to this place. I did have to disengage full self driving and press the P button and press start, but it pretty much did it. And I assume I'm gonna try auto summon over there or something like that. Maybe I'll just record that as an addendum over the top of this as I'm talking to you guys. So thoughts, thoughts, holy crap. <laughs> I'm like, mind blown. This is so much better than 12.3, which was a step change from everything else. It uh, it still isn't perfect, but most of that is really chalked up to navigation. It's just it, it, like a little bit better navigation information. The midterm planner, that 20 to 30 second planner, it feels like it's solved. I, I This was a lot of interesting problems. The left-hand turn took for bloody ever, but it finally, when it did it, that way back at the beginning of the video, when it finally did it, it did it really, really well. It did not feel scary at all. And it, it waited and, you know, like that's better. But again, navigation wise, I would say in the future, what it should do is route itself to turn right and then figure out an alternate path and go around. The U-turn was the one place where it fell down. But part of that, I thought it was making a left turn. And so when it made the U-turn, it scared me. And I, I just wasn't prepared mentally. So, you know, it's one of those things where it's like, I don't know whether I just freaked out too early and it would have been fine if I hadn't disengaged it or not. I'll, I'll try to go back and watch the video, but I'm not exactly sure. But aside from that, I mean, and the driving, it's like, again, if I'm, if I'm like nitpicking, it's like, oh, it stopped too long here. Didn't accelerate quite enough here. Went a little bit too slow here. Didn't slow down for the police car. These are like minor, minor details at this point. It's, this is impressive. And if we can believe, if we can believe Ashok about what he's saying about the next versions, he's, you know, again, he said unprecedented progress in the next versions. So he has seen, he, by the time he posted that, he would have seen 12.3.2.1. He would have already seen it, had test driven it and everything. He also has seen 12.4. He also probably has seen 12.5 in early stages, right? Because they, it takes a long time to get them, uh, adjusted, figured out, make sure that it's all quality, you know, quality assurance, roll it out to the employee fleet, roll it out to limited beta testers, all that stuff takes time. So he has seen many versions past what we have. And if he's saying unprecedented progress, I think we should believe him and I'm going to be super impressed. So anyway, I'm going to go, I think, get some coffee and do an actual smart summon. I don't know if it's actually doing it yet or not. I don't think it is. So if it is, I'll have overlaid it on top of this. If not, then I'll just not worry about it. But I don't know. What do you guys think? You all get a chance to try it. So if you're driving a Tesla, hardware three or hardware four, make sure you enable your free month's trial. And definitely let me know in the comments what your experience is. I think that this, it's no longer called beta. It's called full self-driving. So wow. <laughs> I'm, I'm just blown away. I, I can't even believe it. It's, it's like, it's actually here. It took so long and it felt like it was never going to get here. But now it really does. The, the issues are very minor at this point. And if they continue to improve at this kind of a rate, it's going to be no time at all before this is solved. So let me know what you think. And again, thanks so much for Babbel for sponsoring today's video. Be sure to check out my link in the description and get started learning a new language soon. In the meantime, I'll see you in the next one. Bye-bye.